Today I'd like to talk to you about the blessings of salvation. The blessings of salvation. And let me go ahead and give you the outline if you want to follow along with us. Number one, the blessings of peace. The blessings of peace. You can have the peace of God in your life. Number two, the blessings of hope. The blessings of hope. And number three, the blessings of love. The blessings of love. And the last one, number four, the blessings of joy. I know it's not three, but we're going to get four in uh, in this time allotted. You know, in the first four chapters of Romans, the Apostle Paul has proved that the whole world is guilty before God and that no one can be saved by religious deeds such as keeping the law. He clearly explains that God's way of salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. In Romans 5, Paul begins to list the blessings of salvation. He truly wants everyone to know how wonderful it is to be a Christian. The promise of a wonderful life while on earth should be enough to encourage us to live for our Lord, but the thought of eternal life in heaven should truly uh, thrill our souls. My friends, we are a blessed people, we are a blessed church, and we are a blessed nation. Let's look at the four blessings we have as God's people found in Romans chapter 5. Number one, the blessings of peace. Therefore, and again, anywhere you see that word, you need to understand what is it there for, okay? It's there as uh, uh, talking about salvation. For the first uh, four chapters, he talked about salvation by grace and being saved. He talked about justification justification, and how to, how to know that you are saved. Therefore, ha, ha, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, everyone really wants peace in their life. I, I hate it that uh, we have a war going on even as we speak. And I am praying, and I hope you are praying for Ukraine, uh, that there will be peace over there. Folks, God answers prayers. Our prayers do matter. They really do. But there's two t kinds of peace I want to talk to you about today. Salvation brings, in the first place, peace with God. Peace with God. You realize before you got saved, you were not at peace with God. Okay? You, you did not know Christ as your personal Lord and your Savior. Your sins uh, was, was against you. Uh, your sins... Uh, needed to be forgiven, and you did not have that peace of God in your life. And we can have that peace of God when we put our faith and trust in Christ. But there's another peace also, and, and this is what I'm going to really uh, look at today, is being at peace with yourself. Okay? Being at peace with yourself. Because if people just ask you, are you at peace, you probably would answer yes. But a lot of us do not live like we have peace in our life. If you are a worrier, if you worry, now I know I'm going to step on toes here, but we got to preach the Word, all right? If you are a worrier, you are showing that you don't have peace in your life. And folks, the most important decision, Steve said it earlier, is that you know that when you die, you go to heaven. But that's not where it stops that begins your walk with Christ. And I'm telling you, the longer you live, the closer to Christ you get. And the more you need to be at peace with God and peace with yourself, knowing and having the assurance that if I died, I will go to heaven. So the Bible speaks of peace and what genuine faith does, it gives us security in Christ. Folks, it's one thing to be saved, but it's another thing also to have assurance of salvation. Because Satan will attack you. He will tell you you weren't saved. He will tell you you just went through the motions. He will tell you a lot of things. But being secure in Christ is so important. And having the peace of heart and peace of mind, uh, the Bible speaks of that. Just look a couple of chapters over in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. 
Romans 8, 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And you can see what's going on in our world, folks. The world does not have peace because much of the world has never given their heart and their life to Jesus Christ. And the only way we can have peace in this world is for people to be saved, to be saved and know the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 37. Yet in all these things he listed just then, we are more than conquerors uh, through him who loved us. I'll ask somebody, how you doing today? Oh, I'm okay. How you doing today? Oh, I'm treading water. Folks, we shouldn't be treading water as Christians. When we think that God chose us, that God saved us, that God uh, you know, in, put His Holy Spirit in our lives, it should give us confidence. It should make us excited about who we are. And this is what this Scripture is saying. We are more than conquerors. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. We totally believe as Baptists, once saved, truly saved, always saved. And when you have made that decision in your life, you should have the peace of God in your life. Look at Romans 10. No, excuse me, John 10. I went to the wrong one. John 10. Look at John 10. Jesus is speaking. And he's saying in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Are you following Jesus Christ? And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never. Folks, I am telling you, when you get saved, God puts his hand around you. Jesus Christ puts his hand around you. And the Holy Spirit is wrapped around you. And for somebody and something to get to you, they would have to break the power of the Holy Spirit. They would have to take off the hand of Jesus and take off the hand of God. And folks, there is no power greater than God. Once you are truly saved... You are always saved. And we need to live in that peace that passes all understanding. Twice he says this, Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given, uh, given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hands. And my Father and I are one. Oh, folks, that should make us excited. That should give us peace. That should help us be more than conquerors. I know there's a lot of bad things happening today. But folks, we, are, we can rest in the peace that God gives us because we are secure in Him. Turn a couple of more pages. John 14. John 14. This is Jesus speaking again. John 14, verse 27. John 14, 27. Well, let's go back to verse 25. Verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things into remembrance for you. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Folks, we can have that peace that passes all understanding in our lives. We don't have to worry about uh, the economy. And, and again, man, I paid $3.85 for gas. Folks, I just thank God that I can do that. That is a blessing from God. Everything at the grocery store, all these things are going on. 
Folks, we still need the peace of God, realizing that God is in control. He is sovereign. He is going to take care of his own. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give peace. And folks, the world's definition of peace and God's definition of peace are not the same. Let not your heart be troubled. What does it mean? Quit worrying. Don't worry about stuff. Neither let it be afraid. Folks, the greatest feeling in the world is to know that you're saved. And the next greatest is when you lay your head on your pillow at night to realize that I'm at peace with God, I'm at peace uh, with my fellow man, and I'm at peace with my family. Folks, only God can give that kind of peace. So in this writing, Paul is saying, we as Christians have the blessings of peace in our life. Not only do we have the blessing of peace, we have the blessing of hope. The blessing of hope. And folks, this is where, you know, there's good and there's gooder. All right? This gets gooder. All right? Look at verse 2. Through whom we also have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We as Christians have access to God 24-7, 365 days of the year. If you wake up in the middle of the night, you can talk to God. In the middle of the day, you can talk to God. We are a child of the King. We are a child. We have access, and that access is through prayer. And hope, you know, there's all kinds of definitions for hope, but the most precise one, hope is the certainty of a promised outcome. True hope. Because see what some people say, well, I hope so. Are you saying, well, I hope so. Folks, I don't want to hope so. Just say, I hope so. I want to know so. I want to know when I die that I'm going to heaven. And what helps you with that? It's hope. What is hope? It's believing the promises of God. God has all through his word made promise, promises to us. And if he says it, he means it, folks. He means it. And that's why we can rejoice in the hope of the, of the glory of God. It's not for us. It's not about our glory. It's about God's glory. It's about what God has done. Now look at verse 3. And not only that, but we glory in tribulations. We glory in tribulations, in trials, in problems, in tests that we have in life. And folks, nobody likes tribulations. But God allows these things to happen. He allows them uh, to help us and to strengthen our faith. And we can get closer to God in the times of these trials. And folks, I have grown more spiritually through the hard times than I have with the good times. I have grown closer to the Lord, and I've prayed more, and I've got closer to God in the times of tribulations. And we live in a troubled time. So don't be surprised when these things happen. Don't make a mistake either of what some people say. They'll go through some trials, and then they'll make the statement, well, what else could happen? Well, folks, I wouldn't say that. All right? Because the devil, when you say something out loud, he can hear what you say, but he cannot read your mind, and he's going to do his best for something else to happen. And that's what he's saying. Knowing, look what tri tribulation does, produces perseverance. What is that, folks? That's endurance. The Christian life is not a sprint, folks. It's a marathon. We, the day we are saved, we start out on the finish line. And some of the mistakes that some people make, they just sprint. And folks, we just have to be persistent in our walk with God. We just have to be consistent with our walk with God. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character. What is character, folks? It's who we are. It's our morals. It's, it's, it's our fiber. 
All right? Character uh, in terms of God is holiness. Folks, he is allowing those things to make us holy, to make it to mold us into being more like Jesus. And character, hope. Now, the, now, hope does not disappoint because of the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. So, he is telling us there is a process that we go through. This process we go through when trials and tribulations come. And they come in all shapes and sizes. They come uh, at all times. They come when you least expect it at times. But we can't throw in the towel. We can't just quit because times get hard. Folks, that is the time that we must depend on God even more. Why? Because God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are in these trials with you. You are not alone. You are never alone, the Bible says. So we look at these characteristics that we need in our life, and they say perseverance, character, and hope. And I'll tell you the other thing that we need in our life, and I believe it's the last thing that we master, is patience. We are not a patient people. Folks, God, God you know, time is nothing to God. But we need to have patience and we need to trust in God's timing. Now, hope does not disappoint, and it never has, folks. God has never disappointed us. He doesn't give us everything He wants, but everything that He says we have in Jesus Christ will happen, folks. His will will happen if we will just keep pursuing God and walking with God. Folks, the Holy Spirit and Jesus are our source of hope. Folks, that hope is not a I hope so thing. It is believing that God can do everything He says in His Word. Look at Titus 2. Titus chapter 2. Go with me to Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Folks, I'm telling you, God's not playing hide-and-seek with you. He's not playing hide-and-seek with others, folks. The gospel now, when you think of the internet, when you think of phones, when you think of all the ways that we can get the gospel out, I know not everyone has heard the gospel or Jesus would have already come. But there is the gospel everyone. He wants everyone saved. And the deal is, folks, we don't know who is saved and who is not. And our job as Christians is to share the gospel with people around us. Look at verse 12. Teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. We as Christians should shine, folks. This is a time that we rise up. It is a time where we say, hey, I am proud to be a Christian. I am proud to go to Rye Hill Baptist Church. I am proud uh, to be uh, uh, saved, and, and God is my Savior and Lord, and I will not swear allegiance to anyone but Him. And that's in our lifestyles. Now look at verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of of our great God and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Is somebody ask you, is Jesus coming? Well, I hope so. Does that sound like you're convinced of that? Is Jesus coming? Oh, yes, he is. Who's he coming for? Every one of his children. What if he comes tomorrow? Ooh, that'd be a good day. That's a good day. That's what true hope is, folks. We hope and we know and we have confidence that Jesus is in heaven. He's at the right hand of God. And I'm telling you, when that last person uh, prays the prayer of salvation, God will look over to Jesus and say, go get my bride. And folks, I believe with all my heart, the rapture of the church. Matter of fact, folks, I believe it is the next thing on God's prophetic calendar. 
And folks, that should excite us. It shouldn't scare us. It should excite us as Christians. Look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Folks, I believe with all my heart, Christians should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Why? Your name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Why? Because not even death can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Why? All this today in heaven too. Folks, we have much to look forward to. And in this dark, gloomy, negative world, we need to be that beacon of of light for others. And when they ask us, what are you so happy about? Hey, on a Monday morning, I went to church yesterday. And, and you know, testify for our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at John chapter 3. Just go to 1 John, excuse me. 1 John 3, verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God. I know my father and my mother, Lloyd and Isabel Franklin, were my earthly parents. But folks, I've lost them, and I still have a heavenly father. I have a God who is my daddy. I have a God who looks over me. I have a God who loves me. And it, we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. And we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Folks, that ought to make you excited. I don't know about you, but there's some times I don't even like myself. I don't like what I say. I don't like what I do. I don't like, you know, my thought process at times. And I just think at times, I, you know, I really do. I'm just saying this out loud. You're an idiot. Mike, you're an idiot. Okay? And, and I'm not trying to be too hard on myself. I'm just telling you how I feel sometimes. And when I think of getting that glorified body and getting that clean, perfect mind, folks, that excites me. We are going to be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Oh, folks, it's not a hope, a hope so salvation. It's a no-so. It's not a, I hope He's coming again, Folks, according to the Word of God, I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt He's coming again, and I have much to look forward to in going to heaven. If I had to describe heaven in one word, it would be perfect. Folks, there's nothing here perfect. Nothing on earth is perfect. It's all going to go away. God is going to make all things right, and we will go to a perfect place we can have the peace of God in our lives, and we can have hope in that second coming. The third thing I want you to see, not only that, the blessings of peace and hope, but the blessing of love. Look at verse 6. For when we were still sinners without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Aren't you glad he died for you? Folks, we weren't looking for God. Okay, we didn't wake up and we weren't born knowing God. We rejected God. Most people uh, rejected, you know, God even at first. But as we grew and as we, you know, went to church and read the Word of God, He opened up hope for us. He opened up peace for us. And we saw the love of God in Jesus' life. Look at verse 7. For scarcely a righteous man... Uh, will one die? Yet perhaps a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Folks, I am telling you, God loves you. God loves you. He loves you with a special love. There are basically three types of love. Okay, there's an eros love, which the world is full of. 
The eros is, it's all about me. It's all about me. I don't care if I hurt you. I don't even care if you like me. I don't, it's what I can get out of you. Okay, that's what eros is. Watch TV programs. Listen to music. Watch people uh, at work in the world. And eros is everything. I'm number one. I'm the best. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. All right, we hear that from toddlers, but folks, I hear it from adults too. Eros. And then there's Philadelphia. Phileo love in the city of brotherly love. And brotherly love is good. It is a good thing. We need brotherly love. But the kind of love that God gave us and sent his son for is agape love. Jesus was willing to sacrifice his only son for you and for I. If that isn't love, you, you sang it today, then the oceans are dry, folks. And we know the oceans aren't going to dry up. If that isn't love, folks, I'm telling you, God loves you even in, you know, while you were in your sin. Jesus died on the cross. He hung between two thieves. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He loves the unlovable. He loves you and I. And we have that blessing of God's love. If no one else in the world loved you, God would love you. He would die for you. He has died for you. He is showing His love everywhere. And that's what He's saying. Look at verse 9. Much more than having now been justified by His love, we talked about that in the first four chapters, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. And folks, it's reconciliation. It is being made right with God. Look at verse 10. For if we uh, were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved by His life? Folks, there's three things I jotted down here. Number one, I'm saved. Man, I am saved. Number two, I am, I, I am secure. I am secure in Christ. Nothing can take that away. And number three, I am sanctified. I am a sanctified child of God. No, I haven't arrived spiritually. No, I'm not all I need to be. But God is in that process. He who began a good work in you will finish it. And so his love, folks, is deep. His love is strong. His love is amazing. It is truly amazing. Jesus shed his blood for you, folks, and that is love. 1 John 4. Look at 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Three times in this Scripture, the Bible says God is love. God is love. If we had time, we would go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and look at the characteristics of love. Love is kind. Love is gentle. All those characteristics. Folks, that is who God is. And God wants to pour that love He gave us into us. And He wants us to take that same love and show it to others. And folks, that's what's wrong with our world today. There is way too much hate in our world. Hate. And folks, even to say the word, it bothers me to even say it. We shouldn't hate anything but sin. We need to hate sin. We need to get as far away from sin as we can. And I'm telling you, us as Christians should be able to, and it should be a goal in our lives to help change the world through love. Through God's love is what it is saying. Verse 10. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ was the payment. God laid on Jesus 
all of our sins. And folks, we are forgiven. God has forgiven us. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west. And so being forgiven, being Christians, we should love one another. Look at verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And I heard so many things said in, like this. Well, I'm supposed to love you, but I don't got to like you. I'm like, are you kidding me? Play that on a recorder and listen to yourself. Okay? Folks, you can't find that in the Bible. All right? That's just human emotion is what that is. God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, Jesus died for everyone. God loves everyone, and we need to do the same. Folks, we have the blessing of peace. We have the blessing of hope. We have the blessing of love. And the last one, we have the blessing of joy, of joy. Look at verse 11, and we, we close with this. And not only that, <laughs> have you noticed twice he has said that? You see how this just builds? Hey, you, got, you have peace. You have po hope. You have love. Not only that, we have joy. We have joy. Look at verse 11. Not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Because you are saved, because you have been bought and paid for, because you are sinless. When you were saved, you were sinless. Okay? Uh, it is Christ's righteousness in us. Because of that, we should have joy in our hearts. And I love the acronym of joy. To have joy in your life, the J is for Jesus. Folks, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Just keep walking with Jesus. Just keep as a goal of being like Jesus. The second is O, and the O means put others before yourselves. Help others, pray for others, love others, teach others, disciple others, witness to others. And then the, cell, the last thing is, is why yourself. Folks, we need to be humble as Christians. This world has a huge problem with humility. Everything's a race. Everything's about finishing first. And folks, I'm telling you, if you put Jesus first, if you put others second, and you put yourself last, you will find pure joy in your life. Folks, we have reasons to rejoice as, as Christians. I think of the song, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Go with me if you would. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Folks, we are blessed, and because we are blessed, we need to be a blessing to others. Because God uh, has, has saved us, we need to share Christ with others. We need to praise His holy name. Folks, that's what a song service is for. It is to raise your voices. It is to raise your hearts. It is to sing to God. He is worthy of our worship. And that, uh, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not His benefits. Benefits. We know what benefits mean of, as we work. Okay, these are things we, we receive because we are working. These are things we receive. And again, we're not working for our salvation. It's just things that we get. These are the blessings that we get. He's named at least five right here. Who forgives all your iniquities? Folks, I couldn't live another day without the forgiveness of God in my life. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Number two, who heals our diseases? Folks, God's still in the healing business. 
He's still in the healing business. He really is. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. You know what I say? All this in heaven too. All this. Folks, we are the most blessed people on the face of the earth. And as we close, I would just like to ask you a couple of questions. Number one, do you have confidence in your salvation experience? Do you know that you know that you know that if you were to die today, you would go to heaven? The Bible tells us we can know. Are you sure? The second thing I'd like to ask, are you looking forward to Jesus' return? Are you looking forward to his return? And the third thing, when it comes to the blessings that we have, are you sharing these blessings with others? Are you sharing peace with others? Are you sharing hope with others? Are you sharing love? And love would be salvation, folks. Salvation. And are you sharing joy with others? Folks, we can have peace in the midst of the storms of life when we know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for peace. I thank you, Lord, for love and joy. And God, I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you for the hope that you give us. And God, if there's one person here that doesn't know you as their Savior and Lord, I pray today would be their day of salvation. God, I pray that as the invitation time start, on that first note, Lord, that they would just come and just say simply, I need Jesus Christ into my life. I need to be saved today. And Lord, I want to just think about the Christian, Lord. God, you forgive us. You forgive us and you cleanse us. Maybe today there's a Christian that need to rededicate their life to Christ. They haven't been focused on the right thing. They've let the world distract them, and they let the world pull them down. And God, I pray that during this invitation that you would just renew that spirit, that Holy Spirit in them. And God, I pray that when they walk out of here, they will have a different attitude and a different outlook. And God, maybe others need to follow the Lord in baptism or even want to join the church. God, I pray that your will be done during our time of invitation. God, this is your church. This is your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?